Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of albums that are 30 years old in 2023. This is episode number 11. 31 days in March here in 2023. We've picked out our 31 favorite albums that came out in 1993. We're celebrating our 30th birthdays or their 30th anniversaries, however you like to look at it. And today's pick is the 14th studio album from this British band, this legendary British band, originally released July 19th, 1983, produced by Tom Benunzio and Roger Glover at Bearsville Studios, Bearsville, New York, Red Rooster Studios in Germany, Greg Reich Studios in Altamont Springs, Florida for RCA Records. Of course, we're talking about... The Battle Rages On by Deep Purple. Always love that cover. So 90s though, isn't it? Right. So this was a uh, an interesting album because this was kind of like a band in transition once again. So if you know a little bit of the history of Deep Purple, of course, the previous album had Jolyn Turner on vocals. Right? Jolyn Turner was brought in... Um, from well, he was with Richie Blackmore and Roger Glover in Rainbow, and that kind of worked out, didn't work out right. And the the record label basically got to a point where they were like, "All right, well, you know, Deep Purple would be a lot more impactful if we can get Ian Gillen back in the band, who had been you know ousted a few years prior." And against Blackmore's wishes, that's kind of what they did. But the bulk of this album was already written and ready to go. So basically, they gave Joel and Turner his walking papers, brought back in Ian Gillen. He had to kind of like work with the material that they had and do his vocals and whatnot. And uh, the resulting album, I guess within the band, brought out even more conflict. And then they went out and toured, and then it kind of blew up. And of course... Uh, Blackmore was like, I'm done with this, and he left. They brought in Joe Satriani for a spell, and then, uh, you know, that he helped finish out the tour. And uh, then, of course, Steve Morse came into the band, and then we had a whole long history with Steve Morse as the lead guitar player for Deep Purple. But this, uh, I remember when this first came out, I I was pretty happy to see it, because for me, I love Jolyn Turner. I didn't really want to see him in, in Deep Purple. And I think the return of the Mark II lineup of the band was met with a lot of excitement from the general public. Of course, it didn't last, right? But uh, this is a pretty good album. So, of course, this it brings back together Ian Gillen on vocals, Richie Blackmore on guitar, John Lord on keyboards, Ian Pace on drums, and Roger Glover on bass. Some good songs here. Again, is this, is this a top, top shelf Deep Purple album? Yeah, probably not, but it's damn solid. And I think over time, in the 30 years since this first came out, I think it holds up really well. Some stellar songs on here. I think the title track, The Battle Rages On, which kicks off the album, is absolutely terrific. That is a great Deep Purple song. Then you got, you know, Lick It Up. Kind of rocking, right? Got a good groove to it. Kind of silly lyric, of course. Uh, Anya, I like. It's got those kind of like Middle Eastern themes and whatnot. I think that's a pretty, pretty cool song. Uh, Talk About Love. That's not bad. Time to Kill? I really like Time to Kill a lot. I think it has a great chorus. It's got a great hook. Nice guitar work in it. Time to Kill, for me, has aged very, very well. And I think it's like one of the songs on here that, like, maybe if this album had come out, like, a couple of years prior, you know, I think Time to Kill would have been a, a good hit single in, like, 1986, 87, 88, something like that. Uh, you got the more kind of bluesy ramshackle man. You got Twist in the Tail. Excellent. Nasty piece of work. It's got a nasty guitar riff, pretty rocking. Then you have Solitaire and One Man's Meat. Ah, those are pretty good tracks, you know, not too bad. I don't. For me, I think this is a strong purple album. Is this a 4.5 or 5 star record? No, but uh, it's a very solid release in their discography. And like I said, I think, uh, you know, at the time, maybe not looked at so well, but I think uh, 30 years later, I think this holds up really well as the final gasp of the Mark II era of the band. And uh, so I, I, I listen to this nowadays, and I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of enjoy this. You know, I think I enjoyed this more than the two albums before it, oddly enough. So uh, that says a lot. So, yeah, so let us know what you think of The Battle Rages On by Deep Purple. 
in the comments below, as well as your pick for today, day 11, as we march our way through to 31. Lots of good stuff coming up. I keep looking at my list and I'm like, ah, some really good stuff I have yet to talk about. Some really good, more notable stuff, and there's some really good, like, underground, obscure picks that I have on my list. And I'm looking at my honorable mentions list, I'm like, ah, oh, I got some good stuff in there too. That's why I've been doing a lot of swapping in and out during the month, because, like I mentioned either yesterday or the day before, I think this is, uh, 1983 was a really good year for for stuff that I like, uh, but unlike maybe like 1973, and again, maybe because that's 50 years ago, or even 83, 40 years ago, uh, you know, maybe not 1993 was not filled with legendary, legendary albums, uh, but lots of really good ones. So a lot of them kind of like they're they're all really, really strong, but there there was no, for, for me, there was very few kind of like, oh, absolutely, this, you know, there were some of them. So it's, it's like picking from a whole pool of very strong albums, uh, and a lot are deserving to be in the top 31. So, uh, so yeah, it's just different. I mean, that's, that's the kind of cool thing about doing these different decades like this is because, uh, and depending on what age group you're from, you know, obviously me, a little bit older, right? I lived with the albums in the 70s and the 80s, and then the 90s, you know, a little bit different. We don't have as much history with them yet. So we may be saying 10, 20 years from now, we may be looking back on years like 1993, 92, 91, what have you. And now all of a sudden, some of those albums are taking on more of like a classic level because the test of time, right? Time is what we have and what we don't have. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. So again, let us know what you think of the Battle Rages on in the comments below, as well as your pick for today. And uh, we'll see you again tomorrow with another one. What's coming up here on the channel? So we've got um, UK Connection coming up today, just a few short hours. So we're going to be uh, ranking the songs on a classic album. That album is Ace of Spades by Motorhead. A lot of you have been asking for Steve and Simon and I to talk some Motorhead. So today is step one in that direction. So that's coming up uh, this afternoon. We've also got, uh, we're going to have an interview with the guys from the great progressive metal band Ice Age. They are back with a brand new album called Waves of Loss and Power. We're going to be talking to the guys in the band today about that, about that album and uh, why it took so long for that album to come out and what they've been doing in the years since the last one, all that sort of stuff. So that's coming up today also on the channel. We've got tomorrow, we've got Ranking the Albums, where I will be ranking the catalog of Cynic, the great progressive metal band. Uh, as well as The Curse of the Collector comes back tomorrow. And then Monday, we've got the great crossover show of Hudson Valley Squares and in the Proxy. So that's coming up on Monday night. Also, you'll probably get from me this weekend as well, if not this weekend, during the week for sure. Uh, I'll be doing the next installment of uh, Underappreciated and Overlooked Live Albums. Get another 10 for you ready to go, as well as uh, those great six album runs, another installment, the next five bands who I think had a five, had a six album run that's pretty damn special so i know i'm a little overdue on both of those uh we also recently posted just the other day uh the next installment of a look at my collection It'll be the second of two parts dealing with my movies we'll get back to uh more music stuff uh probably going to do a lot of the jazz and fusion stuff next so that'll be happening so if you missed that not a lot of you watched that posted a couple days ago check that out it's here on the channel and uh tomorrow morning day 11 Actually, no, tomorrow, day 12, of uh, albums that are 30 years old in 2023. So see you then. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as it posts. And please do hit the like button before you go. Also, down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations and our merch page where you can get all sorts of cool Sea Tranquility stuff. So see you tomorrow. See you shortly on the UK Connection. And uh, as always, we're here on... YouTube, all together, all the damn time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.